My name is Ed Wilson. I'm the Regional Manager for Self-Directed Services for the Department of Developmental Services in Massachusetts. It is growing. Uh, Self-Directed Services now comprises 7% of um, the total number of people that uh, the Department of Developmental Services is uh, serving. We're, we're about 7%. I think the capacity for the, the participant to be able to customize and individualize the services, right, um, is what I see as the, as the greatest benefit. You know, a lot of times folks with disabilities um, have a lot of activities, you know. What, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But I think that in terms of the services that we offer, self-directed services can really help to answer the question, who do you want to be? We want to see people build memberships within the community, both formal and informal. So there's this one fellow near me down on Cape Cod who's part of a, a men's coffee club, you know, meets very informally, but he goes regularly. Um, we want to encourage people to build skills, right? Um, uh, and, we, and we want to encourage people, we want to maintain people's health and safety. Um, and uh, we want to be able to help people develop relationships, right? Self-directed services is a series of conversations, and you have to be skilled in the art of those conversations, both at the level of the kitchen table with the family, with the area directors in those offices, with folks here in the regional office, and with folks here at central office. You know, it really is a series of conversations um, that one needs to have. And self-directed services, it's vital that, that, that the Department of Developmental Services be informed by the issues at the kitchen table. That those issues and those concerns and the good things and the bad things can come forward from the service coordinator and the area office to me, the regional uh, manager, to Liz, you know, at central office. That's, you know, that's a great collaboration. That's a, that's a good partnership. That, and there's a, the department does have a, a tradition, you know. We have those local area offices for a reason. We understand that being, you know, that local is better and, and being close to the folks served is, is better. And then having public partnerships as that uh, collaborator and partner with us to be able to um, uh, provide that accountability. I mean, you know, it, it, when it works well, there's nothing like it. Public partnerships, well, th that icebreaker can cut through a lot of that, that red tape um, and create that channel where Families are not overburdened um, by um, program responsibilities, right? They have a responsibility, but it's, it's, it's the right amount of responsibility related to recruiting um, workers and determining their pay and, 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 um, and those kinds of things. But they're not overburdened by, by the administrative and, and uh, managerial responsibilities. And at the same time, the department is able, it's a human service agency, the department is able to focus on you know, human service uh, and tend to the human services and the needs of people while, while public partnerships um, is, is able to, to be um, working with the IRS and the Department of Labor and, 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 and being able to take some of those responsibilities off the table for both parties. They understand that, you know, that it's a financial management service, but we're serving vulnerable people and we're serving families who have a lot on their plate.